Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14. I begin at verse 15. When it was evening, the disciples came to Jesus and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Janet was the star player on nearly every sports team throughout my high school years. She was awesome. She was tall and quick and powerful and very athletic. Everything she did was great. I got to watch her on my volleyball team. She was the hitter, the one who spikes the ball. You know, it's a great position and she never failed. It was wonderful. And yet, Janet was good because Tanya knew how to serve a great serve, and, and Sue was the one who could pass the ball, and, and Karen was the setter who could set Tanya or J Janet up to hit, right? It, it, Janet might have been the star, but together the team was the success. And if we're honest, we wouldn't have been a team if it weren't for Coach Davis. We like to look at the stars, right? We like to note the people who really stand out and make the big difference. We, we know Babe Ruth, but can any of us name any of the Red Sox teammates that won the World Series with him in 1918? We know Billie Jean King, but do any of us know the name of the person who gave her free tennis lessons on the public courts in Long Beach? We know... We know Walt Disney, but do any of us know who his first art teacher was? Frank Sinatra, the name of the uncle that bought him the ukulele that inspired him to learn more about music? Hmm. The crowds were starstruck with Jesus. Jesus was the star preacher and teacher and healer, and, and the crowds were following him wherever he went, hoping that he could do something for them. But Jesus had been, had been teaching and preaching parables about the sower and the seeds and the wheat and the chaff, making the distinction between those who hear and do and those who simply follow and hope. Jesus had been teaching about parables on the kingdom of God being like a tiny mustard seed or a little bit of leaven that makes all the difference in the world, saying that it doesn't take much. Jesus has been talking about parables of the kingdom of God and, and how it is, it is hidden right here at hand, nearby, maybe even in lunch boxes. And so Jesus said, you give them something to eat. We're Methodist. That's our team. And we really like our star, John Wesley. John Wesley is the one that gave us our identity. He helped us be people of social holiness who covenant with one another to continue to work towards perfection in faith, who use the scripture, tradition, experience, and reason to help us understand God and our relationship to God and one another. We are Methodist, and John Wesley is our star, and yet... We can't think about Methodism without mentioning George Whitfield, 
who was with John Wesley in the Holiness Club and helped develop the routines that gave us the nickname Methodists. We can't think about Methodism without recognizing Charles Wesley, who wrote all of those beautiful hymns that we still sing to this day. And if we're going to go that far, we might as well mention the Moravians, who really were the ones that gave John Wesley the inspiration that strengthened his faith. And we might as well go on back to Susanna Wesley, John and Charles' mother, who homeschooled all of her children in the ways of God and the scripture. You know, John Wesley might be the star of Methodism, but there were a whole lot of other people involved in making Methodism a movement. Jesus said, you give them something to eat. And we all know how the story ends. Now, our modern mindset tries to reconcile this story with the scientific probability of whether or not it actually happened. And, and we explain the story away by, by saying, oh, well, one disciple brought a slice of bread and another bought a, a, a piece of fish. And by the time all of the disciples emptied their pockets, they had five loaves and two fish. And when the people in the crowd watched the disciples give what they had to offer for the good of the whole, they were in Inspired to do the same, and by the time all of it was over, 5,000 people were fed, not counting the women and children, and there was leftovers even. You know, miracle explained. And, and it wasn't just the star Jesus who gave the pivotal challenge that said, you feed them, but it was all the other people who said, okay, we'll do it. And it's never just about one person. It's never one person who sees the need and does something about it. It's never just one person who offers what they have to share to make the difference. It's never just one person that changes the world. It, it wasn't just FDR or Winston Churchill or Nelson Mandela. It wasn't just Susan B. Anthony or Che Guevara or, or Harvey Milk. It wasn't just Jesus. But Jesus said, you do it. And everybody around seemed to have said, okay, we'll do it. And it didn't take much. It didn't take much. Mary McLeod Bethune had a delicious recipe for sweet potato pie. <laughs> Bethune was a remarkable woman. She was the 17th child in the family, the family who were freed slaves. Bethune was educated and, and she became an educator and she wanted to help educate all the little black girls that she knew and, and she made it possible for them to go to school and it all started because of that sweet potato pie recipe and $1.50 and, and five friends of hers and, and from that small, barely anything beginning, she formed a school that would become the Bethune-Cookman University. You know, it might have been Bethune's desire to, to teach. It might have been a dream of hers, but who nurtured the dream? Who was the one that, that cleared the path for the dream? Who was the one that walked with her towards that dream? You know she did not do it alone. You know, she had that sweet potato pie recipe, and that's how the school was funded, and, and, and that's how it began, and, and that's hardly anything at all. It's not even five loaves and two fish, really. Emptied out pockets that fed 5,000, not counting the women and children. How is that not? a miracle.
How is that not a miracle? It was a miracle that Coach Davis gathered a group of gangly teenagers and, and helped us find that singular focus to do what we could in the effort of winning a few points and being a good team. How was that not a miracle? How was it not a miracle that, that John Wesley gathered some like-minded people who wanted their faith to make a difference in the world and, and pretty soon from that humble beginning beginning Methodism spread across the globe to today where there are over 80 million people. How is that not a miracle? How is it not a miracle that Mary McLeod Bethune in 1904 as a black woman did what she did? That's a miracle. And it's a miracle when Jesus told the people to feed one another and they did. <laughs> it wasn't too long ago in my childhood household that eight people couldn't agree on what to have for dinner. I mean, really, think about it. In today's context, getting any size group of people to agree on a goal and, and then work towards it for the common good, it's a miracle, isn't it? It's a miracle, or so it seems. First United Methodist Church, it's a flagship church. Its reputation precedes itself as, as people see this church on the hill and knows that it's a place where good ministry happens and ministry that has a impact on people's lives, thousands of people's lives, and people in the community not even associated with this church. It is a, it is a church that welcomes everybody. It is what it is. And, and, and I know a little bit about the history of this church. I, I know about, I know about the 22 years Dr. Stan Wicks has been filling this sanctuary space with beautiful music. I'm lucky to have glimpsed just a little bit of that when I first arrived in January. I, I, I know about Mark Trotter, who, who was able to preach such amazing sermons that he filled this sanctuary space over multiple services. Uh, I, I know about Dr. LaRoque, who had this, this vision that would move the church from Ninth and C down to this middle of nowhere place that would become Mission Valley. I, I even know about Mrs. Case, that elderly woman who, who wanted to hold a Methodist Society prayer meeting at H and Arctic Streets and in the second floor of the army barracks and, and, and 17 people came. But you know, it wouldn't be much of a church if those 17 people didn't come, it wouldn't have been much of a prayer meeting or a legacy. It, it, it wouldn't have been much of a church if, if Dr. LaRoque would have been standing in the middle of dirt at the intersections of 805 and, and the 8 as, as he was waiting for people to maybe buy into his courageous vision, you know, because that could have happened, but, but no, that, that didn't happen. The people around him caught the vision and, and gave what they could to make it happen. And, and you know, it, it wouldn't have done Mark Trotter any good to preach a sermon on the Word of God if there weren't people to listen. I'm not sure that would have been very rewarding for him. And I, I imagine Mark listening today, maybe shouting out a little amen, sister, at the truth of that statement, you know? Now more than ever, we need to affirm that the church is not the building and the church is also not only the church when people are in the building. And the church is, is not Dr. LaRoque or Reverend Trotter or Dr. Wicks or even me. The, the church is all of us. The church is all of us, all of us together. 
And you know, right now there are a lot of people, a lot of people who are anxiously waiting for the election and for their star candidate to come around and make all things right. There are so many people anxiously hoping for an end to this pandemic and the need to protest. There are so many people anxiously worrying about where their next slice of bread or piece of fish will come from. And you know, all of those things have never been solved by people simply hoping, by people waiting and seeing. It's never been about one person. It's always been about all of us working together. It's always been about putting our faith in action. It's always been about coming together around clear values of love and justice, kindness and mercy. It's always been about sharing what we have for the good of others. It has always been about being able to hear when Jesus says, you do it. And it's always been about the people who say, huh, okay, we'll do it. And when that happens, it is nothing more than a miracle and nothing less. Thanks be to God. Amen.